Hey guys, we are in the basement and today, yes, today guys, we're gonna do a John's Arcade, well, I guess kind of like a tech video, and also a product review, and actually guys, this is gonna be very cool, okay, because, you know, for a long time, like, like, like really, since the beginning of my collecting career, I've had this dream, okay, I always thought, wouldn't it be cool if this old technology, this old stuff from the 80s, could somehow be connected to the internet, you know, because, you know, when Xbox Live came out, it kind of blew my mind with uh, with these online leaderboards. You could compare scores with other people, and I always thought, wouldn't that be cool if we kind of had Xbox Live for arcade games? All right, and I, I've been dreaming this for a long time. Okay, and then last year, late last year, I got an email from these two guys from Germany. Okay, Jochen and Stefan. Okay, and they emailed me. And they said, John, we have created this device. Okay, that plugs into a Z80 socket on a lot of common arcade games like Donkey Kong and Frogger and all that, and we'd like to send you one to test. And of course, I said yes, because this truly has been a dream of mine like since day one, okay? So this device right here, uh, they set it up for me for Donkey Kong. And the idea is this, okay? So here, it's a little daughter board, okay? And you put your Z80 chip in here, you remove the Z80 from the Donkey Kong PCB, okay? You set it up with these unique codes. Uh, you plug Ethernet into this socket right here, and then you play the game, right? And then what happens is this, uh, the score, the scores are uploaded to the internet through their website, which is high score, say, it's actually arcadehighscores.com, okay? And so your scores are uploaded to this leaderboard at arcadehighscores.com, and you can compare your scores of everybody in the world. I mean, how awesome is this? These guys are on to something. So I'm very excited to install this and try it out. And we're, we're gonna go to the computer and actually we'll, we'll install it, play a game, and then we'll go to the computer to see if our scores magically appear on the internet. I, what do you guys think about this? This is amazing, right? <laughs> so it looks like these guys did a pretty good job. Now they did use Ethernet, which makes a lot of sense because if they use Wi-Fi, you'd have all kinds of authentication, WPA, whatever, you know, all the encryption and stuff that you have on Wi-Fi. So with Ethernet, if it's on your local network, it's just kind of trusted and assumed it has permission. So it does make sense to use Ethernet. Now it was a kind of a pain in the butt because I had to run Ethernet over to my Donkey Kong and I'll show you guys what I did, okay, before we pull the game out. So I have Ethernet just hanging out down here on the floor, right? And so I ran it up into my rafters here and yes, onto the ugly part of the basement and the ceiling, which is a big rat's nest of wires. But if we go over here, I have my little router. Actually, I have an Apple ba base station, okay, that was out of Ethernet jack. So I went on Amazon and I ordered this, this TP-Link uh, switch thing. It's like $10, it was really cheap. And so now I have more ethernet jacks here. Actually, I needed one because of my uh, new uh, gaming PC. So I have it all taped down here with gaffer tape. Yeah, th by the way, gaffer tape is amazing for like organizing wires and stuff. So I had this all taped down. But anyway, I added this little switch. Ethernet here is running out of it and then we're, I'm running it up into the ceiling and then over to the Donkey Kong, okay? So anyway, we got the Ethernet ready to go. So what we need to do now is let's pull the game out. We gotta remove the PCB and install these guys' uh, daughter board. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of take the toys and stuff out the top of my Donkey Kong and uh, we'll pull the game out and uh, uh, we'll see what happens here. Now I'm gonna lose all my high scores, okay? So we should probably make record of them because right now my high score, at least my most recent high score is 130,900 because I've been doing my John's Quest for videos. And right now in my Donkey Kong, I have the Brazington high score save kit. So we're gonna be losing that and, and, and replacing it with this new one, which will be connected to the internet. So I'm okay with that. So we're gonna have, basically we're gonna have a, no, a brand new leaderboard with no scores on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove my toys and stuff from the top here, my Mario, my Pratt rum that one of my viewers sent me. Should we have some of this tonight? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so, so did you guys miss me? Yeah, I, you know, I, I was away this weekend. I, I couldn't do a video. I was down in New York City, so uh, for work stuff and uh, could not do a video. So here I am, uh, what is it, Wednesday night? And actually this weekend I got family stuff going on, so might have trouble doing a video over the weekend too, so we'll see. But I've been wanting to do this video for some time, so alright, let's, let's pull the Donkey Kong out. And again, we got the Ethernet here ready to rock, but we'll just kind of get it out of the way. The game's on. So let's pull this out. Alright. 
So I sure hope this thing works, like right out of the gate. Cause that's, that's what I want to happen tonight here. I want this to just work. So I suspect it will. All right, let's pull it out. All right, so we're gonna have to open up the back of the game. And I'm also wondering how we're gonna run the ethernet into the game, but I guess we'll figure that out in a little bit. So I'm gonna need a screwdriver here to undo the back door. So let me grab a screwdriver and we'll undo that real quick. All right, so let's undo my door. I, I just have a Phillips screw in here holding it on. Originally it used a lock, but uh, I never replaced it, replaced it. There's a lock in here now. I guess it's not functioning. Anyway, all right, so the back door is off and here's the back of an original Donkey Kong. Um, now Donkey Kong has a bunch of little teeny tiny connectors, okay? Later, like Donkey Kong Jr., like the late model ones and Donkey Kong 3, they used an edge connector to connect the PCB to the game, you know, with the harness. Uh, Donkey Kong has a ton of little connectors, right? So let me turn the game off. And you can see right now, I have the uh, Brazington kit installed right there, okay? And we're gonna have to remove that. And the Z80, the original Z80 is sitting in the Brazington kit. So we're gonna remove the Z80 from the Brazington and then put it into our new daughter board. So anyway, let's remove all the little connectors here. So this one's for coin. This one is for counter. I, I labeled these a long time ago. This is P5. And then uh, this is that video, yep. And that one, and that one, and that one. So that, that's it. And there's there's another plug on the other side for power to the back board. Um, I do have some uh, thumb screws in the back here. I think originally, yeah, actually my game, I think was missing the L bracket or ha only had one of them. I don't remember. But I had to like make my own like thumb screw s situation here. I think, I don't recall to be honest. All right, so let's pull this out. And then we also have another power connector over here. Now, if you didn't have this power connector, you can use a rainbow cable, which basically jumps power from one side to the other. But originally they didn't have the rainbow cable because if you use the edge connector, you have to bring power to the other board and you do that with the rainbow cable. All right, hang on, let's get this out. I'm having trouble getting this off with one hand here. Arr, hang on a second. I'm gonna have to put the camera down just for a second because I can't get that off with one hand. All right, we have the board off here, but we'll, actually I, I'll just point this out, okay? So on, so when you have the little tiny connectors, you're gonna put individual power connectors on both sides, one here and a power connector on that side right there, okay? Now, if you're using the edge connector, all right, like, you know, right here, what you would do if, because a Donkey Kong 3 had an edge connector. It did not have the little connectors. Some Donkey Kong Juniors had all the little connectors, but no edge connector, and some Donkey Kong Juniors had edge, had edge connector harnesses, okay? Meaning it was, just, it was just a single plug that plugged in here. But what that meant was all the power was on this side, so you had to bring power to the other side, okay? So if you try to plug a, a, a board like this without the rainbow connector into a harness that has an edge connector, it will not work because there's no power on this side. So you have to use what they call a rainbow cable, which jumpers the power from here here to here. So just keep that in mind. Just a little little fun fact here about Donkey Kong boards. All right, so let's go over to my desk. I'll get the daughter board and, and we'll get to work. Okay, so we have my uh, PCB on my desk here. And again, this is the brazing tin board. We're just gonna pop that off. Um, the brazing tin board is fantastic. It, uh, uh, I actually have the one that has D2K, which is Donkey Kong 2. And Donkey Kong 2 is a really tight game. Um, so we're gonna be losing that. And I'm just gonna pop this off here carefully with a screwdriver. And yes, I always use a screwdriver. Now we, we need to pay attention to pin one, okay? And if you look on the daughter board here, it's labeled one. And we also have the little notch on this chip, which is also pin one. And if we look at the, if we look at the board here, pin one is also labeled on the PCB, okay? So when we put this in, they actually put a dot on theirs where pin one should be right there, okay? So we just gotta make sure we observe polarity when we're swapping our, our, our Z80 chips, okay? So this is the Z80, this is the processor, okay? It's the computer of this. And a lot of things ran on Z80 back in the day. It was, I think, the most popular and successful chip. 
I think they're still being used today in some uh, kind of low-level stuff too. I think a lot of retro computers use these too. Like the Z80 Spectrum. Okay, so the Z80 is off. And we want to now put it into our new daughter board. And again, I want to observe the polarity here. And I want to make sure I just get all these little pins lined up. Just kind of carefully get it in there. And these are like those machine pin sockets with the round pins. All right, there we go. So I just want to make sure I got every leg and every hole before I push firmly on this. I kind of question this one right here. So these guys actually sent me this board a while ago and uh, I never really had any instructions and uh, I, I guess they've updated the code since. So before I did the video, I actually updated a lot of these chips with the latest code they sent me. Um, they actually sent me the chips. I, all I did was just swap a couple of these chips. So I didn't think it was worth showing you guys. And, and you, if you were to order one of these, you wouldn't get the, the version I used to have. You'd get this version of code. All right, so we're in now. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and push firmly. And, uh... Okay, so we're all the way in. And I'm just kind of double-checking my work, okay? Notch right there, that's pin one, and a little dot on the board that is also pin one, okay? So now we need to put pin one on our original PCB in the same spot that pin one is labeled on here, okay? So if I were to look on the board, right here, I see right there it says pin one. See that? And also, if you look around, all the chips are oriented this way. All the notches are on this side. So we, it's safe to assume that pin one is always going to be south here, uh, just based on what's around. You can't use that as an absolute rule, but it's almost always the case, you know. If pin one is on this side, on this chip, odds are all of its neighbors are also in the same spot, you know. So pin one's here, pin one, they're all south. Pin one, pin one, pin one, pin one, pin one. So pretty much uh, universally across the board, all the pin ones are facing the same direction. So anyway, let's go ahead and put this dude in here. So we do need to be careful of this cap right here. So I don't know if it's going to be resting on it or, or hitting it. Let's see if we can just kind of bend it back a little bit. So basically, I'm just going to line this up with pin one in the pin one spot. Gonna have to kind of get low here. And these are, I think, meteor pins too. So it might require a bit of force. All right, so we're kind of in. Let me just make sure we're lined up here. I'm just gonna kind of get another angle on this. That looks good. I wanna make sure we're clearing that cap and the cap isn't hitting a trace or anything. All right, I'm pushing down. These things can be kind of hairy to put in here. I remember the Brazington kits when I, because I have those in all my Nintendo games, and I just remember being so scared installing those. All right, so the cap, the cap appears to be not touching anything. Just kind of looking here. Because the daughter board kind of just sits right on that cap. I'm trying not to put too much flex on here. All right, so let's take a look. Let's double check our work, okay? So if we kind of look in here. So that looks pretty good, right? Kind of looking all the way around, making sure the legs are all in, making sure that cap is not touching any kind of trace or anything. I don't think it is. Seems to be in a good spot. Oh, it's actually not even making contact with the board. So I think we're pretty much done. I think it's all installed. I'm just looking all around, making sure there's no legs out, make sure nothing looks funky before we put this back in. And we'll go ahead and just double check our polarity. Pin one, pin one. So everything's installed, I think, correctly. So let's go back to the game and, and let's let's 
plug it all back in and see what happens. Okay guys, I got the board all plugged back in and basically I just kind of did the opposite we did when we unplugged it. Just make sure, made sure I plugged everything in the right spot. You, you can't really screw it up because the plugs only go in one spot, which is nice. Um, so the one thing we do need to do is we need to plug our ethernet in and I have my cable right here. So let's go ahead and just plug that into the daughter board. Okay, I'm all right. How cool is that? <laughs> my Donkey Kong is hooked up to the internet. <laughs> I love that actually. All right, so I'm just I'm just double checking my work here. Uh, blah blah blah. P10. All right, so I think we're all good. The sound one I remember now. It's it's a two pin pr prong and it goes into a four pin socket I believe, and it goes in the two pins that are closest to the back door. Um, all right, so I think we're all hooked up here. I'm just kind of double checking my work, making sure I didn't miss anything and I didn't. So we're, we're ready to power it on, guys. Um, so let me get the camera here. Let's, uh, I guess we should rotate the game a little bit. I don't know, let me see. I need to be able to get my camera in front of it. All right, so let's rotate my Donkey Kong. And uh, let's turn off the light and let's turn on the game you guys excited <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen here so here we go all right I'm turning it on okay so the board lit up back there all kinds of LEDs and, and uh, Ethernet oh look at this wow the pictures all jacked All right, so we press one and two player plus jump to get in the menu. All right, press start to enter setup. Cabinet style. I wonder if I uh, hit the the uh, controls on the board because the board actually has. Uh... Ugh, I gotta get a mirror. Can't see anything. So this is the setup menu right here. Okay. So we need to come down here to where it says online, okay? And we need to change that to on. Now he sent me instructions here. I think that I moved the uh, controls on the PCB, so we'll, we'll fix the picture here in a second. All right, so on, okay? Now we have to enter these codes. It says PK and SK. Now I believe that these codes are like unique to me, so I'm not gonna actually show you guys the codes because I have to get clarification from him on that because I think if you get this board, you get your own unique key, okay? So when it uploads, it knows who you are. That's that's my hunch. I'm not positive about that, but I'm gonna go ahead and in, in, input my PK and my SK codes, okay? And then I'll come right back. Okay, guys, I just inputted my PK and SK codes. I, I have no idea what that means, but I'm not sure, but I think those codes are unique to me, and I actually adjusted the uh, screen, too. I totally bumped the... Uh, uh, the PCB, there's a couple of adjustment pots on the, the, the game PCB itself. So anyway, let's look at the menu here. It says Donkey Kong Save Kit version 1.0. Make your changes here. Cabinet type upright, lives, three jumpmen. Bonus jumpmen is seven. That should actually be 10,000. We could change that later. Coinage, one coin, one credit. DK level, America. Attract sounds off. Free play, yes. Copyright message, uh, that's all messed up. Not sure what that's all about. Game Donkey Kong original. So I'm going to go ahead and save these settings, okay? And I'm gonna press jump, dip save, press start button. All right, it says press start to enter setup. Nope, all right, so here we are, we're in the game, okay? All right, so I don't know what's gonna happen here. So let, let, let's play a quick game. Let's get some kind of a score, okay? And, and let's see if it scores, let's see if it shows up on the internet on their website. So, so far, pretty painless install. So I'm not really interested in, in getting like a super high score right now. I just want to put something up that we can see on the internet. 
So I already have the high score in the machine. So let's just die. Let, let's kill ourselves. Let's put our initials in, and then we'll go to the computer and see what happens. All right, so we just died. We're completely dead. All right, so let me put my initials in. All right, my name was registered. Now, <laughs> did it go to the internet? I don't know. Let's go look. Let's go look on the internet. So let's go over here to my little... By the way, if you guys want to keep track of my scores, you can go to arcadehighscores.com slash John's Arcade. Now, the one thing I kind of want to know is if, if if I share my key with you guys, right? My, that, that little that top secret code they gave me, could we just have a, a leaderboard, leaderboard for John's Arcade viewers, right? So let's refresh this. And we all, sh there it is, guys. Look at that, it worked! <laughs> all right, all right, that is sick. That is sick, sick, sick. There it is. There's my score. John Jacobson, 600 points. All right, that's awesome. That is completely awesome. That freaking worked the first time. <laughs> so, guys, wow. That is totally a dream. So, arcadehighscores.com slash John's Arcade. Okay, so you guys will be able to see, you'll be able to keep tabs on my scores. <laughs> <laughs> now it doesn't show like the. I think if I click on this too, it'll then take me to the global leaderboard. Okay, so here's all the people that have these boards right here. Okay, and you can see that Dan Doc has first place with 487. So it looks like the board is registered to you. So that number I think he gave me is definitely unique to me because it knew it was John Jacobson, right? So so I think if you bought one of those boards, he gives you your own unique uh, code for those two codes. And then you guys can uh, upload to the leaderboards. Now, so th the board also plays other games, okay? It, it, it could play the Pauline edition of Donkey Kong. And, and, and also, I believe they're working to get Donkey Kong 2, D2K, which Jeff kills Whiskey, whatever his name is. Uh, he's the one that created that. So anyway, that was pretty cool. You, you got to say. So should we play like a le legit game and try to put up a real score? I, I think so. Um... And I believe he put the Pauline edition on here too for me. Let's see if we can actually find that. So I'm going to press one and two players and jump. Okay. How do we get in the menu? Okay, there we go. Press start to enter setup. Oh, wait. So you got to hold in one and two players and then hold in jump. Gotcha. All right, I had to cut away there because I wasn't covering the uh, <laughs> my secret code. And anyway, I actually went through the thing and actually reset the uh, dip switch settings. But I want to go through this real quick with you guys and just kind of show you the options here. Okay, so cabinet type, upright or cocktail, obviously. Um, you can have three lives or more, you know, four, five, six. Um, bonus jump man at 7,000 points is the default. The, the Twin Galaxy setting is actually 10,000 points, and so I'm gonna rock that. But I'll tell you, that there's no difference between seven and 10,000 uh, for a bonus guy, because 7,000 and 10,000 are both very easy to achieve in this game. So one coin, one credit, but it is on free play, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, the DK level order, it says America or Japan. Okay, that's interesting, because Japan, that ROM set played the levels in a different level uh, order, okay? Like, like the Pie Factory was like the second level or something. Um, and I, I don't think I've ever really played the Japanese version of, of this, but um, there is even an older version that has like a ladder cheat where you, you can never die if you're on the ladder. But anyway, if you wanted to screw around this, you could try the Japanese version, which has a, a different level order, okay? Different ROM set. Um, you, look at this, DK level, only level one. So you can just sit there and practice level one or level two or level three or level four so this is a great game to become like a, this is like a great training game for Donkey Kong you can just sit here and play the same levels over and over again America and Japan so I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the default settings though 
A track sounds off. Absolutely. Free play, yes. Copyright message, Nintendo, Nintendo USA. And then here it says, game, Donkey Kong Original. Now, you can also change this to Donkey Kong Pauline Edition. These guys sent me some instructions saying if I wanted to add that version, I had to burn a new ROM or something. But let, let's see what happens if we actually select it. So I'm going to come down here. Save scores all. Backup scores. Restore. And then let's go to save. All right, so dip save, press start button. So it's gonna load the, the Pauline version right now, I believe. All right, it says press start, okay. So I got, I'm just gonna wait here. Okay, so all the scores are reset, by the way, because when I was screwing around there in between takes, I actually accidentally deleted everything. Um, so we're gonna have to put up a new score. Um, so this is the, the Pauline edition, but I didn't burn the ROM they wanted me to, so I don't see Pauline or Donkey Kong. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Uh, I'm gonna have to ask them about that because I, I don't know if I was supposed to be able to play Pauline or not. I, I don't know, I, but they sent me a link to burn an EEPROM, but I, I don't quite understand what I need to do. So I guess for now, we'll, we'll just leave it Donkey Kong. And uh, I tell you what, why don't we, uh, Let's put the game away, and I, I want to get a, a... Actually, I want to make sure it's still working. I'm going to go back into the menu here. So I guess to switch games, you, you got to hold in one and two player. And just cover this. And then release it. I see. So press start to enter setup. Oh, shit. I, so I hold one and two player until it goes to this menu. On your mark. Uh, you have to release it. And then press start. Okay, and I'm gonna come down here and we're just gonna pick good old Donkey Kong. DK original. And I'm gonna come down to save. Press start button. And then right now, I think you just let it go and then it will boot the game. Okay, so right now the score's on there 100. Last time we got 600. I, I wanna just beat 600. I just wanna make sure it's still working before I put this back in its hole. And then we'll play a legit game. Let's play some real Donkey Kong. I know our quest for a series, you know, I think the highest score we got was like 130. So maybe we could beat it in this video. I don't know. But let's get at least, uh, let's beat 600 just to make sure this is still working. After I screwed around with the settings off camera. So I just need to get over 600 points. Oh my god. <laughs> I died at 600 points. Alright, so we got a thousand. Alright, that's good enough. I'm just gonna die. Let's put our score in and we'll go over to the computer to see if it's still working properly. I'm actually curious though, so it'll all the scores are gonna say my name, right? Is that what's gonna happen? So if you go to John's Arcade, it'll just say John Jacobson and all these scores. I think it'd be really cool if we had like a community John's Arcade leaderboard for this game. Okay, so 1100 points. Let's go to the computer and see if those 1100 points show up. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and just refresh this page. And let's see if it shows up or not. Let me just kind of zoom in there. Alright, I'm going to refresh it. Let's see what happens. And... Okay. Okay, so I see the top score is 1100. And then the last score is 1 and 2. I see... So it's gonna keep my top score and my last scores. I wonder how many of the last scores it'll show. So John Jacobson's best score is 1100 points right now, and then my last scores are 1100 and 600. All right, so it's all still working. So we can safely button the game up. Um, and then maybe when I figure out how to do the Pauline thing, we'll, we'll come back and we'll do that in another video. So right now I'm gonna button this game up and I'm gonna put it back in the hole and then let, let's play a real game and, and see if we can put a, 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 a respectable score on this machine because I'm sharing this with the internet. <laughs> I need to have a good score. So guys, I'm just gonna put this all back together and actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna snake the ethernet cable through the bottom right there. And you know what, before we do that though, I did wanna show you guys what's going on in here because there's all kinds of activity. So the board right there is all lit up, right? And you can see the ethernet. I'm just kind of zoom in down there. 
See that? So there's all kinds of little activity going on. We got flashing green lights. We got a red light on the Ethernet board. You could see the Ethernet thing, little activity going on here and there. So that's really interesting. I also noticed in the menu system there was a restore function. So I'm not positive, but I think that if I were to accidentally wipe the scores, I could put in my keys and say restore, and it would download the scores from the Internet. I, I, like, I like to get some clarification from them on that. But that's a pretty slick feature then because your scores are essentially being backed up to the Internet, and you could restore them at any time with this board. So that's pretty neat. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put this all back together. I'm going to disconnect the Ethernet cable, and I'm going to sneak it through the hole on the back door right here, and we'll just sneak it through there. That's the plan. So, all right, I'm going to do that real quick. All right, just really quick. I, I just wanted to show you what I did. So there's a hole in the back door for the vent, and I just ran the Ethernet through that, and, and that's it. So that's nice and simple. So right now I got the Ethernet all on top of the cabinet so I can put it back in there uh, without it bumping into the wheels on the bottom. And I'll also have to grab the power cord and do the same. And I, I always just kind of pick it up and, and put it over the top, and then I push the game back just so the wheels don't run over the cords, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna go ahead and just roll this back and the cord just drops, so. <laughs> but you, I, I hate moving games back like that because if you don't have the cords up, the wheels will just jam up on them. So you gotta get them up and kind of in your hand as you roll it back. So I'm gonna do that really fast. All right guys, I got the Donkey Kong back in its hole here. I put my toys back on the top too. Um, I'm gonna have to neaten up the ethernet cable up there. It's a bit of a mess. But anyway, let, let's play a game. Let's see if we can get a respectable score on my le my new leaderboard at arcadehighscores.com slash John's Arcade. I'm also curious to see if the game plays any differently, does it? I don't know. I, I don't think there's any reason why it should. I don't think he actually modified the game code, but we'll see. Um, so let's kind of zoom in here. And we'll try to get a good, good spot. You know, filming Donkey Kong can be a pain in the butt here. I think that's pretty good. So right now my high score and my new high score save is 1100 points. Um, I'm a little bummed that I lost Donkey Kong 2 because I really liked D2K. Uh, I'm not going to lie, uh, it, it's a great game, I think it's an awesome mod. So I hope they got, those guys can get permission to add it because uh, it's definitely worth your time. D2K is fantastic. Um, and and uh, so I don't know, we'll roll with this for a little bit. I mean it's definitely a cool novel idea to have this thing save your scores. Just trying to get this in a good spot. It's so tough to film this game. Let's come over like this. How's that? Is that all right? A little more centered? How about that? I think that'll work. All right, so let's give it a shot here. Hopefully our sound doesn't cut out because uh, I definitely have a problem with that sound cable back there. And, and if I get a little rough with the game, the sound can cut out. So let's see what happens. But I, I, I would like to get at least 100,000 points this game. We'll see what happens. Just doing a little bit of point pressing here. So I jumped those barrels twice. Let's get the hammer. I usually like to get the hammer for the first blue barrel. That's usually my move. And I'd love to get that fireball. So I gotta be careful here because I'm about to lose the hammer. Wow, that's a pretty good hammer. All right, this is a mess. So you can control the barrels a little bit in the beginning. And again, you know, the idea with controlling the barrels is that the barrel will go down the ladder that, Don that Mario is walking towards. But in the beginning, it doesn't happen as frequently, but later on, the odds are much better that that will happen. All right, so there we go. So we ended that level with, what, 8,100 points? That's pretty respectable for the first level, I must say. All right, so here's my pattern for this level. I think my monitor is out of whack. 
You know, I bumped those knobs, and I, I foolishly moved the knobs on the game PCB. There's like a, a horizontal and vertical position knob on the PCB that a lot of people actually usually overlook. And when we were messing with the board, we must have bumped it. Alright, so let's go up here. Let's try to get all these dudes. And so we, we want to get to the right here because the fireballs are going to spawn on the opposite side of Mario. So if Mario's on the right, they spawn on the left. And because we removed all those rivets, they'll be trapped on that side. And by the way, I was looking at their, their website. I mean, they they have this uh, high scoreboard for a lot of games. And, and we'll talk about it after this game. But, like, really, most Z80-based games uh, you can get this kit for. And I think it's, like, 60 euros, which, I don't know, is that 100 bucks or something? It's not really cheap, but it is cool. And on their website, they show D2K, so I'm not really sure what's up with that. I'm going to get to the bottom of that D2K thing with them and, and see if I can add that to my game. So... I usually like to have at least 13,000 points when ending this level, and uh, I'm doing really well here. We, ha we, did we did some pretty good point pressing on that first board. Okay, so we ended with 17,200. That is fantastic! Because I used to always say, if I, if I have 13,000 points after the second level, I'm having a good game. Or, that was kind of my, my gauge. And we're at 17,200. That's pretty tight. Maybe we'll do a little point pressing here. I haven't played this game in a while. You know, we, this, this is when I usually have a good game. Shit. Ah, I'm getting cocky. <laughs> The thing is, I never point press after the first barrel board, and I, I really shouldn't start. This is not the time to, to grow a pair here. But I bet if I was point pressing, I would definitely be beating my, my previous scores in my John Quest 4 videos. Because right now, I'm already like three, 400,000 points ahead of the game. Jesus. Oh my god! Wow, I'm doing really crappy. Okay, 24,600. I would really like to get at least 100k. So if that guy comes down, I usually go back up. I do like to get all the uh, little prizes. Jesus! Ah! <laughs> Ah, oh, man, I was having a good game, now I'm having a crappy game. We gotta see at least all the levels just to make sure everything's working here. Thirty-one one hundred. So 
So you, you gotta be a little brave with the fireballs. You saw there, I, I kind of just walked towards it and it turned around. Okay, come on down, come on down. Uh. Just play chicken with it. Good. Alright, so they should all be on the left side now. There's that one guy down there that's kind of a rogue. So we're point pressing up here. You basically want to get as close to Donkey Kong without touching him, jump in the air, and then when you're in the air, press to the right. And you're not pressing to the right till after you press jump. And so right now I'm getting 100 points every time I do that, which is faster than the bonus clock is counting down. So like if you see the bonus clock, 18, 17. So if I were to leave the level right now, I would get the points on the bonus clock. So right now I'd only get 1,400. So I'm going to get more than 1,400 by doing this. And you kind of get in the zone. And you can let the clock go all the way to zero. You will not die when it says zero. You have a couple seconds after that. So 100. So it's at zero. One, two, three. Get out. All right. So 41,500. Clear this level as fast as possible. So I didn't move there because I didn't want that barrel to go, that go down. Just so want to safely get to the hammer. Now, when there's two barrels close like that, do not walk. Just let them come to you because the hammer can be up and the barrel will go underneath it and you'll die. Come on. So, like, stop. Alright, so the next one here should be the cement factory. I mean, it feels like Donkey Kong. <laughs> Alright, so this is that level, man. I either pass it the first time or I don't. And we're looking like we're getting kind of lucky. Please don't go down. Please go up. Please go up. Please go up. Ladder, go up. Alright, good. Uh, 57,000 points. We're on level three. Come on, come on, come on. Alright, so the second time around the rivet level, you definitely want to run to the center. You want to run right to the yellow thing. This is like a little safe spot. And I'm waiting for that long spring. No, I'm just waiting for it. Ah. Oh. Oh well, you know what guys, you know that I guess we're not doing a John's Quest 4 video. So that's respectable. 58600, whatever. I'm a little rusty. J O N Oh wow, look at that. You could put more. Huh, they made it so you could put in a, a full thing on here, huh? So you're not limited to just three initials. That's interesting. So they definitely hacked this game up. So I'm going to put John John J. So let's end. That's interesting. So uh, I, I, I'll say this. I kind of wish they didn't do that. You know, I, I just want the pure experience. I don't want any added stuff. That's really not appealing to me at all. I, I, I want the real game, you know. But that was cool. I, I wonder if there's a way I can just have the pure ROMs. I don't, I don't want to have the extra digits for my initials. That's that's not the real version. So, but yeah, that's pretty cool. We should go on the computer to see if my score shows up. Fifty-eight thousand six hundred. Um, 
I'm guessing it will. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty cool, I have to say. Uh, my, my complaints uh, are, well, the, the Pauline thing didn't work, and I think that's because I need to download the ROM set they told me to download. So I guess I need to burn a new ROM. I don't know if, they, if they'll give you that ROM. I don't think they do, actually. I think that, uh, I think they want you to burn your own ROM for that. Uh, to, to be able to access the this, this second version, which is the Pauline version. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. So let, let's go to the computer. I just want to see if the score shows up. And... Uh, Oh, we'll do some viewer mail. You guys want to hang out for a little bit? Let's go over here. And by the way, this is their little high score website, but we'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, arcade high scores. Um, all right, so let's go to my page, which is arcade high scores. So this is their site, by the way. J arcade high scores slash John's Arcade. And uh, all right, so there we go. Top scores, 58,600. Oh, look, it did put in my... Uh, John Dash J. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I do kind of like that. That's really weird. Cause so last time I put in John Jacobson instead of my initials. Huh, I don't know what to make of that. So this time I put in John Dash J. Oh, I see. So if I put in J-O-N, I don't really know, to be honest. I need to ask them about that. So these are all the high scores on here. The names are Dan Doc, Dan Doc, a new Nuki. Oh, so it says weird. So maybe my default, if it's if my initials are J O N, then it knows it's me. I think that's what it is. And if I put something else in, then it lists that as someone else. So so I could have a friend come over here and he could put a high. I bet you that's what it is. They they know that my default high score is J O N. My, my default initials. So that's always going to be me, and it says it's John Jacobson. And then if a friend puts in something else, like Dave or, or Phil or whatever, then it would put that name on the leaderboard. I think that's what it's doing. So, well, that's kind of slick. So obviously there's a lot to learn here, and there's a lot of features and, and little things that a lot of high score kits don't have normally, which I think it's cool, but, you know, as long as they don't mess with the original game code, uh, I mean, the game itself played fine, except for, you know, the ability to put in extra initials. That was the only thing that was seemingly different, so I guess we can roll with that. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. So let's go back to the table here. I want to do some viewer mail, and we'll, we'll just kind of hang out for a little bit. What do you guys think? And... Uh, so their website is ArcadeHighScores.com, okay? They charge 60 euros for this thing, and uh, I, I don't know what that works out to. Um, you can get an offline and an online version. Uh, the offline version is 45 euros, and the online version is 60, and, and, and I guess you can install Pauline. I, I don't know about D2K. They're going to have to answer that because I, I don't have the answers there. Um, if you go to their website, it shows D2K. So I'm going to ask them about that because I really do want D2K on my board. Um, and I, I own it. I, I bought D2K. I have that code. I have the rights. <laughs> so, um, Okay, so look in here. RK High Scores, they got Asteroids. Uh, they have Bubble Bobble, uh, Bump and Jump, Centipede, Dig Dug, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong 3, Donkey Kong Jr., Eagle, Frogger, Galaxian, Gorf, Gyrus, Mario Brothers, Popeye, Radar Scope, Scramble, Space Zap, Time Pilot, Tutankhamun, Wizard of War. So uh, this little online thing supports all of those, and, and that's that's pretty impressive, actually. So anyway, yeah, that was cool, right? I mean, I, I like it. So if you guys want to keep up with my scores, go to arcadehighscores.com slash John's Arcade, and you can see my current high score. And uh, we'll, we'll be revisiting the... Um, the John's Quest 4 series, and now we kind of have a purpose. So, uh, so Jokin and Stefan, uh, thank you very much for sending me that. Uh, I do have a lot of questions, and I, I think after you guys watch this video, you'll probably email me. That's my hunch. So, so I'm wondering, how come Pauline's not working right? Why, why are the graphics, the sprites missing? You did tell me I needed to burn a ROM, so maybe that's the step I didn't do, okay? I, I just assumed it was already on there, and uh, not sure about the D2K thing. I would love to know. Um, it would be also really cool if we had like a community John's Arcade leaderboard. Would you guys would you guys be into that? I think that'd be kind of fun. It would be even cooler if other people's scores showed up on your machine, right? So if we had a John's Arcade leaderboard, right? And so if they, if they bought one of these from you and they said, hey, I want to be on the John's Arcade leaderboard, then my score or someone else's score would show up on each other's machines. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? <laughs> so anyway, all right, let, let's move on. Let's do some viewer mail here. Did you guys like that video? That was pretty neat, right? 
Okay, so uh, if you guys want to participate in the viewer mail segment, uh, basically you need to email them to me at blkdog7 at gmail.com. That's blkdog7 at gmail.com, okay? And in the subject line, you have to put viewer mail. That's very important. Um, if you don't, I will not find them. So in the subject line, please put viewer mail, blkdog7 at gmail.com. All right, first one here is from... Uh, from James. Uh, hey John, uh, just wanted to send you an email to let you know that I just picked up an Asteroid Deluxe over the weekend. I transported it on its side in the back of a truck and didn't have any issues. Thankfully it was still working when I got it home. I have a couple of questions. And by the way, uh, James, I'm assuming you're the same one that asked me this, uh, I think in email or on Twitter. Yeah, it's okay to put games on their side. It's not my first choice though. Uh, I think putting them on, on their back is more natural for the game because the monitor is kind of uh, used to being in this position and you're just kind of leaning it back. When it's on its side, it's, it's, it's a very unnatural position. It, 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 it looks like to me, you know, compared to how it is originally mounted. So I think when it goes on its back, it, it's not as much stress, but I have had to put games on, its, on their sides that just will not, would not fit in my Explorer. I know Paperboy was one of those, uh, it, it, the, it was too deep. Um, there's been a few games, like Neo, actually Neo Geo I, I trailered, but uh, like Street Fighter I think was one I had to put on its side. So yes, uh, uh, sometimes you gotta do it, it's not your first, it shouldn't be your first choice in my opinion. Anyway, he says, uh, uh, what is the best light to use for the black light? I just started researching this and I see there are multiple versions available, black light white, black light purple, black light blue. What's the deal here? Uh, if there's one that's better than another, it seems like it would be better to have the background on the dark side so it's easier to see the vector graphics. Well, uh, I actually researched this for you. Uh, I'm not sure, I, I know I must have replaced my bulb at some point. Uh, but the bulb you want is an F15 T8 slash BL. It's a BL bulb, okay? It's black light, it's not blue, it's not purple, it's not white, it's just a black light. So you want an F15 T8 slash BL light, okay? Now I know like on Tron, there's two black lights on there. One is a black light and the other, uh, and by the way, the one you want, the bulb itself is white. Uh, and, and the black light has like a black light filament, uh, so the tube itself is not colored. Uh, and Tron has a, like a white black light and a normal black light, if I remember correctly. Uh, but Asteroids Deluxe should be just the normal, plain old black light, which is a slash BL light. So it's F15 T8 slash BL. Uh, you, you can buy those online. I usually go to Top Bulb. Um, so F15 T8 slash BL. How hard is it to clean the mirror in this thing without risk of damaging it? I haven't messed with the mirror at all and I'm a little intimidated by it. So actually, while we're talking about this, why don't I show you guys what we're talking about? So when I got my Asteroids Deluxe, uh, it, it, the mirror was dirty and I needed to clean it and it was hairy, okay? And I remembered that I went in through the back and I just kind of to put my hand in there and, and cleaned it, okay? Because because uh, Asteroids Deluxe has like a, a black light in there that makes the background glow. And there's like a half silvered mirror and the monitor's on the bottom. It's a really neat effect. But that mirror gets dirty and you do need to clean it. And, I, and when I did it, I, 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 I did I pull the mirror out? I think I did actually. It, I remember it being really hairy. Um, I think, I, I seem to remember removing the graphics in the back and sticking my hand in there, but um, I, I really remember cleaning it from the back. You, you know, try cleaning it from the back with it in and, and just be really careful with it because it is kind of a, a weird, fragile little system in there because I, I do remember being intimidated by that mirror. Uh, so, so try going in from the back and, and just kind of reaching your hand in there because I'm 90% positive that's what I did. I, I, I remember though messing with the mirror brackets. Maybe I did pull that thing out. I, I don't really remember, to be honest. So, I, I guess I don't have an answer for you, but but I would uh, I would definitely at least try to just get your hand in there and just clean it from the back. Uh, that's what I would do first, okay? Uh, and, and I was also intimidated by it. Uh, and my last question, I've noticed that after my ship is destroyed, it sometimes can take what feels like several seconds to redraw my ship. Is this normal? I've watched some gameplay videos. I haven't seen this happening for anyone else as far as I can tell. Have you ever heard of this and what should I check? Actually, I think that is normal. Because the game waits for a, 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 the asteroids to be out of the way before your ship can respawn, okay? So if it looks like your ship could potentially get damaged, it won't respawn it. Okay, so let's let let's go ahead and kill ourselves, right? Okay, so watch one, 
two, three, see? So it, it waits for like a safe zone to pop open with the asteroids. So like if I were to die like right now, one, two, three, yeah, I, I sure seems normal to me. This is a cool game, by the way. So yeah, you know, it, compare what's happening here with, 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 what, with what just happened here. But no, I, I think the game always has had that little delay because it, it, it waits for an opening, it waits for the asteroids to be out of the way so your ship can safely uh, spawn in the center. So that sounds normal to me. If anyone feels otherwise, uh, leave a comment. But uh, if you just saw there, we counted the three clearly and and then our ship appeared. So, and then what else does he say here? Uh, finally, I missed out on getting a John's Arcade t-shirt for my son. He turned nine a week ago and asked for a John's Arcade shirt after the uh, after the order period had expired. Hopefully we can get on the next round of t-shirts. Actually, I'm gonna tell you something. Uh, the first t-shirt, you know, the, the This Is Brown paint shirt, uh, Teespring, you know, the campaign is still there. And uh, they reopened the campaign for the next few days. And I guess enough people said they still want one, so they reopened it. And so if enough people order shirts within the next four days, they will print the shirts again. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description, but you don't have a lot of time. You've only got a couple days to do this. And I don't even know how it works, because I wasn't even aware the campaign was reopened. Uh, actually, Ian Kellogg told me. I don't know how he figured that out, but he said, did you restart the t-shirt campaign? I'm like, no, I didn't. But I know that they have a thing on there that says, uh, if enough people say they want to do it again, they'll reopen it. So enough people must have said it. So they've reopened it anyway. It's open for an another three or four days. I will leave a link below. Click that and go order those shirts because you don't have a lot of time if you want another shirt. Um, thanks for all you do for the arcade community. Hope I'll catch you later at Grinkers. P.S. I heard you talk about ground control the other day on the podcast. I haven't been there yet, but we just got a new arcade here in Central Oregon. And it's amazing for a smaller town to have. This is called Vector Volcano Arcade. So, James, I hope I, I helped you there with the uh, asteroids questions. It's hot down here, guys. The games have been on for a while. <laughs> Uh, next one here is from Steve at, at Top Tier Arcade. He's got a YouTube channel. Go check it out. Uh, seems like a nice guy. He loves those fighting games. Uh, Top Tier Arcade. Anyway. Uh, hey, John. Uh, Steve here again from Top Tier Arcade. I've always been enjoying all your videos, as always, and was curious about a few things. Uh, before John's Arcade became the official name for your arcade and YouTube channel, were there any other names you tossed around or thought of instead? Did anyone help you with the name or was it all you? Well, Steve, I didn't... It's funny because it just... It, it just became that. You know, I, I don't think I ever set out to do anything with the channel. And I made one of my first videos that just said John's Arcade because that's what it was. It was my arcade. And, you know, when it was upstairs, like, three games, you know. And... After that, I guess I always called it John's Arcade, and I never said, I never thought of calling it anything else, you know, like, uh, some people, like my friend Sean calls his Galaxy Blue. I just never considered anything else because I, I never set out to do this, you know? I didn't sit down and have a plan and say, I'm gonna make an arcade in the basement and give it a theme and, and call it the, the Space Cade and everything's gonna be all spaceships and... Uh, it, it just, they were my games, my name's John, it's my arcade, John's Arcade, so <laughs> that's what happened, honestly. And, and then as my channel grew, I, I, I just kind of made uh, what I was calling it more of a brand with my logo and all that stuff. Uh, now he says, now that the arcade hobby is a big part of your life, have you or your family ever thought of moving to a home that could, uh, could accommodate a bigger space for more, more arcade games? You know, it's it's fun to dream about. You know, I thought, oh, what, what if I had a bigger house or a better basement or a walkout basement? I mean, I've certainly had those thoughts, you know. But I don't think I, I I'm I, I have no uh, plans on moving, and I actually like my house. You know, it's 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 older. You know, it's a little dated. I, I probably should renovate, but but. but uh, I like it. It's cozy. I, I, I say that a lot, but I, I, I like it down here. It, it suits my needs very well. And uh, I, so, no, I haven't thought about it. It's God, it seems like such a hassle to move. <laughs> I, I, you know, when I moved here, I, I don't want to do that again. Can you imagine having to move all this crap? 
Oh my god, that, that would suck. <laughs> so, my understanding is, the question three, is that you are half Italian, John. Uh, do you speak any of the Italian language? Uh, by the way, spaghetti and mozzarella doesn't count. I am, it's, my mother's Italian. Uh, uh, and I don't speak Italian, you know. I, I, do I know any Italian words? Mostly food stuff, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so no, I don't speak a, a lick of Italian. Uh, my, I don't think my mom does either. So no, I, I don't speak any Italian. But I have an Italian mother. My my grandmother was Sicilian, and uh, my grandfather was Italian. Uh, thanks for all the great work you do for the hobby and encouraging myself and others to build their own arcade and all the best to you and your family Steve from top tier arcade. Well, Steve I hope you answered your questions in. and check out Steve's YouTube channel top tier arcade All right next one here is from Chad. Uh, hi John. I watch your videos every week over time I notice you always say you can't see your monitor when adjusting them from the back of the cabinet in some episodes I know you know why that's true because I never have my mirror handy and I could never find my mirror I don't know what it is I lose mirrors like crazy and I always have to go upstairs and take my wife's mirror and she gets pissed off at me <laughs> because she goes to grab her mirror and, and I have it in the garage and so I know a couple times for Christmas uh, she put mirrors in my stocking <laughs> so, and I have lost all of them so I don't know why I can't keep track of the mirrors uh, he says, I too, as I'm sure many others in the arcade community have the same problem. A simple solution that I made a few years ago is I attached a, a couple of pics here of it. It's a mirror mounted on a flexible ne neck with a clip. It cost me about 15 bucks at Walmart. Uh, it is well worth it. I made this from taking a flexible clip light, removing the light fixture, mounting a mirror in its place. You can clip the mirror anywhere on the cabinet or somewhere, something nearby, an adjusted viewing angle with the flexible neck. That way you can watch as you turn pots. I use mine a lot and recommend having one. You know, this is a pretty clever idea, I, I have to say, right? Look at that. So he's got a mirror with a little flexible neck here with a clamp. You know, because when I do it, I'm usually behind the game. I got one hand like on the on the neck board, my other hand's adjusting the mirror. And this guy right here, look at that. He's got a, a that, that's pretty clever. I, I have to look into something like that. So there's a sh the money shot there. That's a pretty good idea. I, I have to say, uh, Chad, I will consider this. Uh, you know, th it is actually a neat idea. I I I'll keep my eyes out for some kind of clamp like that. Maybe there's another thing I can find, you know, instead of taking apart a, a lamp or something. I, I don't know. So anyway, that's going to do it for viewer mail. Uh, a couple things I want to plug really fast. So uh, Ian and I, uh, 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 Ian Kellogg at iankellogg.com. Him and I are working together, okay? And we have John's Arcade branded cap kits. Ian Kellogg's an engineer. He's a really smart dude. And he's been putting together these super high quality cap kits that we're branding with the John's Arcade brand, okay? Yes, Ian and I are, are partnering on this. Uh, you are supporting John's Arcade when you buy these, okay? Okay. And uh, actually, if you guys go to iankellogg.com, use coupon code John's Arcade until the end of February, and you will get 10% off your entire order. And Ian uses the highest quality parts. These parts last, you know, seven years. I think they're rated, you no, know, 7,000 hours. And some of them rated to 10,000 hours. And he does something really slick here as he labels all the caps, which nobody does. So if you want to get a cap kit with the highest quality possible, easy to use. You've seen me use these in these videos. And if you want to support me, go to iankellogg.com or the John's Arcade branded cap kits using coupon code John's Arcade. Take 10% off your entire order. And you can use that coupon code for anything on his site. He, he has a lot more than cap kits. He's got, you know, uh, pull position repair kits. I, I haven't actually looked in a while. He's he's constantly adding stuff. But I actually worked with him, you know, to do the labeling scheme. And and him and I talked about what would be included in the kit that you normally wouldn't get. You know, with uh, the the twenty EZ kit, uh, you'd you'd get like the the B plus uh, pot and stuff like that, and the deluxe kits and all that. So, go to iankellogg.com, Coupon code John's Arcade. Ten percent off until end of February twenty sixteen. So guys, that's it for this video. And then also Arcade Outsiders, uh, we're not we're not able to do the show this week. We're going to do it next week because Joe and I all, both couldn't really do it tomorrow on Thursday. So we're going to get back on schedule next week uh, and doing that podcast every other week at ArcadeOutsiders.com. So every other Thursday starting next Thursday is going to be kind of the new little schedule. And, uh, you know, and, you know, we have our events coming up, too. Uh, the, the next one is BroFest 2 at Fun Spot. And I really want you guys to come to this. Uh, it's June 2nd and 3rd, which 
is like that Friday and Saturday uh, in June. The first Friday and Saturday. It's going to be at Fun Spot. This is now the official Fun Spot tournament. Um, and it's just for fun, guys. You know, But, but all the scores are going to count. You know, Orca is going to come there. Clint Torres recorded the scores. We're all going to be staying at the Nassau Resort. Uh, if you want to go, call, go to Nassau.com. Call the phone number on there and tell them you want to re reserve a cabin or a hotel room using coupon code, uh, or actually just code bro, uh, BROFEST, and, and you'll get a discount. Um, but that's coming up soon, guys, June 2nd and 3rd. Before you know it, it we're all going to be there just having fun, and you really want to stay at the NASPA because at night after the event, we all go back, hang out on the beach, and it's a good time. It, it really is. So it's an opportunity to hang out with me and, and Sean and Joe and... And, and uh, Greg from Arcade Impossible will be there, and, and uh, 34K and Gak, you know, my buddies, uh, who are on the board of directors. Uh, so, so anyway, definitely show up for that. And then, of course, we'll be at California Extreme, and then also Grinkers in October. Um, and, and, and then, you know, my two podcasts, Video Game Outsiders at VideoGameOutsiders.com and Arcade Outsiders at ArcadeOutsiders.com. So, guys, that is going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, that high score safe kit is a really neat idea. Uh, it almost has too many features. I, I'm going to live with it uh, before I pass complete judgment on it. But so far, I mean, it works. Uh, I, I think I can get over the high score. I, I'm such a purist with these games. You know, I don't want any extra BS, you know. And I guess the fact that you can add more than three initials maybe works with the online thing. You know, if you've got two friends named John, you know, one could be John J and one could be John S. I, I guess that makes sense. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. So I'll, I'll talk to those guys and see if we can get the, uh, uh, the, the whole uh, Pauline thing straightened out because I'd like to try that and maybe we'll do a video on that. Um, I, I do think I'd probably need to burn a new EEPROM. But yeah, very cool. Arcade uh, was at ar arcadescores.com. And of course, Stefan and, and Jokin, uh, thank you very much for sending me that to test out. It's arcadehighscores.com, sorry. And, and if you want to see my scores, go to arcadehighscores.com slash John's Arcade. So anyway, guys, that's it. I'll see you very soon. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Later and bye. <laughs>